I'm Mike Brady, and I'm your state senator, and I want to welcome you to Brady Works, a show we try to do periodically to give you updates on what we're doing at the State House and what we're doing for your district, or our district, I should say. We just came through with a marathon session in the State House. We usually have to get everything done by the end of July every year, but sometimes there's compromises and conversations that go back and forth between the House of Representatives and the State Senate, and things don't get done right away, so we have to extend uh, deliberations. And that's what happened this past weekend. We were hoping to get everything done by Sunday at midnight, but we went on and we kept working through till Monday morning at 10.30 this past Monday morning. The good news, though, we passed the budget in uh, addressing uh, infrastructure funding and in, in total budget funding of $52.7 billion to our Commonwealth to give back to you, the consumers and the constituents. And this is great news to help with funding for schools, for infrastructure, as I mentioned, for un other initiatives, and we passed some other great legislation. And I'll get to the, some of the earmarks in a minute that I was able to get to our district. But an important thing that I wanted to mention is the voting. In this coming um, election cycle, we have a right to vote by mail. And uh, it started, obviously, with the pandemic, with the COVID pandemic, but we continue that, and people are able to vote by mail if they choose. So everybody in the Commonwealth has been sent an application if they want to vote by mail due to their circumstances, whether it be health circumstances, whether it be work circumstances. I know some of the students are going back to school. The voting day is September 6th, the day after Labor Day, but if people are busy, they can vote by mail, and you need to send in those applications to get back to the your local elected officials, and they will be mailing out ballots, which they are currently doing. If you haven't done that, you also can vote early through from August 27th to September 2nd. Now, in the city of Brockton, they're going to have voting up at the Westgate Mall, which they've done the past couple of years. In the local towns, they're able to um, vote in their local elected clerk's offices. And if anybody has not registered to vote, the, the last day to, to register to vote is August 27th. So these are important dates I want the constituents to know. And I want to thank you all for your continued support. If anyone has further questions, they can always call my cell phone at 508-345-8632. Or if they have any questions relative to legislation we passed or anything else relative to that, they can call my state house office at 617 Seven two two one two zero zero, or they can reach me at Michael Brady at masenate.gov. A couple other things I wanted to mention: the fair share amendment, which we passed in the state house, which was very important to get extra revenue for infrastructure for our roads because they're still in very difficult, deplorable condition, but also funding for education. That is going to be a ballot initiative coming up in November. We all supported it in the state house, but it. There was some uh, opposition to this, so it's going on the ballot for the November election. That is very important. That is extra funding for our Commonwealth to give back to our districts. And again, the important initiative is for public education, which I've been a huge supporter of, and for our roads. And another thing, we passed the um, act to get more funding for our education system in, in the Commonwealth. We're bringing more money to education into the cities and towns that we represent and uh, that got kind of delayed a little bit because of the COVID. So that's being fully implemented over a seven year period to our school systems. And we want to make sure our students are fully educated, that the schools are fully funded to take care of our students, our priorities, teachers, staffing levels, et cetera. And also we are passing legislation to hopefully get more school buildings built. I know in Brockton years ago, we built seven elementary schools with funding from the state, 90% reimbursement. No other community got that. But, um, you know, there's a lot of needs. I know in the news recently that there was some school building because of lack of supplies for our construction workers that they're on hold or delayed. We need to continue to get school building assistance funding to have adequate and safe learning facilities for our students and our teachers and everybody who works in the school system, air quality, et cetera. So we're working on that. Uh, another thing we did was the act to regulate sports wagering, and that was part of the long deliberations, as I mentioned, in the State House during the budget deliberations. And that allows for online and retail wagering that will be allowed, betting on events involving state colleges like local colleges like Boston College or UMass, 
will not be permitted unless the teams participate in a collegiate tournament, like the big basketball tournaments, or if they go to the main tournaments, but they will be not be allowed to bet on local Massachusetts colleges unless they go to a tournament, but the residents will be allowed to bet on colleges outside of the Commonwealth uh, professional sports. And bettors must be 21 years of age to place a bet <coughs> with a licensed sports book, and they may not use a credit card. So that's an important thing that got put on there, and that's going to be bringing more revenue and jobs to the Commonwealth. We also passed landmark mental health reform, and that continues to be an issue. Even though we <coughs> excuse me, suffered through the pandemic, mental health was still a priority. Addiction crisis with our families was still a priority. So we passed landmark mental health uh, reform, and this delivered to Massachusetts with the goal ensuring that people get the mental health care they need when they need it, and make sure there's efficient funding for that. That was very important. We also passed uh, foster greater equity in the cannabis industry, and again, that's been a big debate, and again, we want to make sure that revenue gets back to our cities and towns that they choose to have the cannabis in their communities. The other thing was a big transportation and infrastructure bill. And as I mentioned, even though the fair share amendment is for infrastructure as well as education, this is some other legislation we passed in the state house. It brings $11.3 billion to transportation and infrastructure. This is huge. As we know, our roads are deplorable. Our transportation is a mess. The MBTA is still a mess. We have to address these issues. People need to get to and from work every day. They need a safe way to transport, whether it be the local uh, community rail system, our MBTA system, our bus lines, and our roads. And we passed landmark funding for that, $11.3 billion. Another big issue is an act driving clean energy and offshore wind. People want to make sure that <clears throat> the air we breathe is, is clean and, and not causing harm to our community like they have in other countries. And we want to make sure that that is good. And we're moving forward with more offshore wind <clears throat> and clean energy. We still have to work, though, and I know that Gas prices have been through the roof, but we still have to work on finding cleaner ways to get energy into our system and, and to keep the bills for our consumers down because, as, he, as we know, heating costs are through the roof, gas prices have been through the roof, and we still are working on addressing that. And part of the economic development bill that uh, we're still working on that didn't come to fruition at the end of the session, which was a formal session, we are still working in the State House, even though we may be working informally or sometimes we can get called in for a formal piece of legislation. We're still working on an economic development bill. That is going to give money back to our consumers, but there's a debate that was a landmark uh, voter initiative passed in 1986 that if revenue reaches a certain plateau in the state, some of that funding has to go back to the constituents, and they're still deliberating that to see how much money is going to go back to the residents. In our economic development bill, there was a lot of initiatives to get funding back to our districts to get uh, money back to our constituents. If people are making less than $100,000, they're potentially able to get a check of $250. If they're a couple making up to $150,000, they're able to get a check for $500,000. But there's other tax initiatives and tax incentives, uh, child care tax credits, senior citizens, and we'll work on veterans' benefits. So that is important legislation that we're still working on, and hopefully that'll come to fruition. Also, judicial modernization legislation, and the bill invests in information technology used by the judiciary and close loopholes around gun laws, because we've got to protect our system and our, and our citizens. And, you know, we're not going after the legal gun owners, but there's too many illegal guns on the streets, and we want to work with our local law enforcement agencies and those ghost guns and everything else to make sure our public is safe. Knock on wood, we haven't had situations in Massachusetts like other states, but a, a situation can arise at any time, and we want to make sure our public residents are, are safe and secure, and especially young children going to school every day. You don't want to have parents be worried about sending their, to, uh, their kids to school, the teachers to be worried if their families are going to be coming home at the end of the day. Another piece of legislation we passed is to strengthen local public health services. And that was an Act 2.0 to improve local and regional public health systems and address disparities to help out our less fortunate communities, our minority communities, with health initiatives. Another was the Student Act <coughs> Save. This addresses, as I mentioned, school shootings and teen suicides. And again, that all ties in with mental health, suicide prevention, 
we need to continue to address that. And even though uh, during COVID, it, you know, verbal uh, internet meetings were not working, so we're going back to normal meetings at, at, at group settings and so forth can, so people can get the help they need. Another piece of legislation we passed was giving adoptees access to birth certificates. This just shows that all adoptees will have access to their original birth certificates. Under the current state law, an adopted person born between July 17th of 1974 and January 1st of 2008 sometimes cannot access their original birth certificate without attaining a court order that unseals their record. This legislation passed by the Senate would close this gap and it would allow adopted individuals over the age of 18 or the adopted parents of a child under 18 to access the adoptee's original birth certificate. And I know even a lot of immigrants coming to this country, sometimes they misspell the thing on their birth certificate or their visa, and that's a major problem that we have to address because I have a lot of immigrant families that call us and have problems with their citizenship, and they go in the legal way. They're not illegal immigrants. These are legal residents of our Commonwealth that here on visas or work visas, and they have trouble getting their initial birth certificates and, and so forth, so this will help them out. Another thing is our veterans, and we lead the nation with veterans benefits. We did the Welcome Home Bill, the Valor Act 1 and 2, but we can never do enough for our veterans. I'm proud and honored to serve on the Veterans Committee, and we passed Veterans Home Governance legislation, and this makes key reforms in the governance structure of the state's veterans' homes. You know, we saw what happened up the Holyoke Soldiers Home. We passed funding to get that somewhat straightened out to build new homes, but we need proper oversight. So this ensures both homes are federal licensed as healthcare facilities and mandates increased state management. And this also provides independent oversight and accountability of veterans' homes management. Obviously, following the tragedy at the Holyoke Veterans Home in 2020, which resulted in the COVID-19 related deaths of 78 veterans, one veteran lost at a, at a soldier's home is too many, never mind 78. This legislation established a joint committee, oversight committee on veterans' homes in Holyoke and the outbreak to investigate and make recommendations which resulted in this legislation. And not only the home up in Holyoke, but there's veterans' homes in Brockton we helped fund to get veterans off the street that are homeless and get them back into a normal work cycle and lifestyle. And this is going to help those veterans out. So this is so important. And then we also passed uh, another piece of legislation supporting veterans and military families. This addresses the Commonwealth's most immediate needs in the veterans community and makes necessary updates to service members with their quality of life issues and acknowledges our military branches in individual service including supporting military families who relocate to the Commonwealth with expedited licensure and school enrollment, creating education awareness programs, and establishing the Massachusetts Medal of Fidelity. So that's just some of the legislation we passed. Getting back to the budget, as I mentioned, it was over $52.7 billion. I just want to talk about a couple of initiatives that I was able to work on, and thank you to my service on the House Ways and Means Committee and my great relationship with the leadership in the Senate, we were able to get some local earmarks for my district. We passed uh, some legislation to get $50,000 to the Central Plymouth County Water District Commission. This is addressing our water issues and water quality. And, you know, we get most of our water from Silver Lake down in the Kingston, Pembroke, Halifax area, and it was once most of the pristine water resource in the Commonwealth, but when there was water shortages and droughts, we had to look for other resources. And at the time, they dipped into Furnace Brook and Stump Brook and the Halifax Mont Ponds at West Pond, and that's when the city finally came up with a desal plant, the first of its kind on the East Coast years ago, to turn desalinated water into portable drinking water. And they've done it on our ships with our military for years. This is the first on the East Coast. But it's not cheap, and we've got to make sure that air quality is, and, and water quality is safe and portable and drinkable. So every year I get money in the budget to clean for any cryonic bacteria, any allergy growth, so our drinking water is safe for our community. A lot of towns don't have that initiative, and I know even the town of Randolph is dealing with some water issues. And um, with the new redistricting, if I am reelected this coming election cycle, Avon and the southern end of Randolph will be in the district, and we are currently working on that to address those issues. Another thing we got is testing in, uh, of the chronic bacteria. I also got some money for Leyland Farms, and that's a recreation committee in East Bridgewater to help out the, the residents of East Bridgewater. Some other 
funding I got, I was able to get 500,000 for durable medical equipment reuse program. And this is coordinated reuse equipment in partnership with five nonprofits, five state entities, and this collection refurbishes gently used durable medical equipment for distribution to our seniors, helps our veterans, and people with disabilities of all ages. Choice for teens, this was a huge thing. You know, I'm a big supporter of public education, after school programs for the teens, et cetera. This 50,000 initiative, which we were able to get passed, this will help mentoring programs for teens, community-based after school programs, expanded, manage life choices towards achieving their potential goals. Choice for Teens provide outreach to middle school students who live in neighborhoods with high risk for drug abuse, gang, and violence exposure. This program gives students an insight into consequences of crime and allows them to establish their education goals and newfound perspectives in the life's opportunities. The Champion Plan, and this is a huge thing. This started under the late Mayor Bill Carpenter. It helps people with addictions in a place to go. It helps with detoxification, CSS, outpatient, medically assisted treatment. And this is modeled after a similar program started in the community of Gloucester. This helps individuals suffering with SUD who need help, ask for help, and it helps with Brockton Police Headquarters to serve as a point of entry. I was able and fortunate to get $100,000 in the budget for this initiative. This has helped so many communities, so many students, and so many young people. And, and you know, even though we've passed a lot of drug legislation, those drug uh, dealers are still trying to predator on our uh, young people. So this money is going to help. Uh, another thing, with our large Cape Verdean population in the city of Brockton, I was able to get $50,000 for a Cape Verdean Association Elder Program. This is huge to help with outreach, advocacy, English as a second language, referrals to social services, and helps our elderly with a social daytime health programs to enhance their quality of life. Not only with the, um, with the, ha the Cape Verdean community, I was able to get funding last year in the budget to help out Haitian uh, immigrants and other immigrants, and we have a lot of Haitian immigrants in the city to help them with the same. We funded and got more money for the English as a Second Language program. We also got money for immigrants with, with what the earthquakes that happened in Haiti, not one but two earthquakes, and all the violence that's happened in the community of Haiti. We have a lot of Haitian immigrants in the city of Brockton and some of the other towns I represent. That money helped to get a facility started on Legion Parkway in Brockton and also in Boston on, on Dorchester, Mattapan Square on Blue Hill Avenue. So that's just some of the things. Another initiative I was able to get was $100,000 for racial equity in the Justice Institute. Now beginning in its fifth year, this leading entity for change with racial equity and Justice Institute, it was started at Bridgewater State University and is currently comprised of 27 institutions of higher education in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I was able to get an additional $100,000 for this, this initiative. They're working with Bridgewater State University, Massachusetts community, and this is so important for our district. So that's another little item I was able to get and help with the budget. And uh, there's a lot of gaps with racial equity in uh, you know, our minority students, so we need to help all of these constituents as much as, much as possible. That's just some of the initiatives I got. Again, I want to listen to you, the consumers, my constituents. We are always available. As I mentioned, my phone number at the office is 617-722-1200. My cell phone, which I'm always around in the district, I'm always meeting with residents or businesses, is 508-345-8632. And you can reach me either at the state house at michael.brady at masenate.gov or my personal email is Brady Brockton, one word, B-R-A-D-Y-B-R-O-C-K-T-O-N at AOL.com. We are continuing to work on other initiatives. I know that the, the economic development bill, which was so important, um, that is still being negotiated on. So even though the formal sessions may have ended this past Monday morning at 1030, after a full night from Sunday into Monday, we were, we were there from early on Sunday morning, over 24 hours, deliberating the budget and other legislative initiatives until 10.30 on Monday. 
I tried to get a little power nap afterwards and it, it was not easy because I've got a lot of constituents that have needs and, and my phone was ringing off the hook afterwards. Another thing I want to mention to our residents is people when they're going on vacation, please check your passports. We put things out on the internet, but you got to make sure your passports are good for so many months moving forward. I, mean, I believe it's six months. Um, people go on vacation in these, um, these facilities that help you book your flights and all that. They don't tell you enough about, you gotta make sure your passport's illegal. And I've run into a Greek family in Brockton that their poor father had passed away. They had to go back to the old country in Greece to have a memorial service. And the wife's passport was good, the children's, the grandmother's, but the father's passport was only good for a couple months and he was not able to fly, it took forever. We are working diligently with our federal delegation, our Congressman Stephen Lynch, our United States Senators Ed Markey, and um, our other Senator, uh, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren, but it is so important that we work together and we've got a great relationship working with our federal delegation because we want to make sure these passports are up to date. And some of these facilities that you go to because of COVID may not be open, so you can't just show up in Boston and expect to get a meeting. You have to make an appointment. My office is continuing to get calls on this, so this is so important that please check your passports uh, before you take a vacation or you're going away for an emergency situation. And uh, that's an important initiative. Um, so as I wanna reiterate this fair share amendment that's fully being implemented, that is $1.5 billion over the next seven years. Uh, the, the voter initiative that's coming up, please pay attention to these ballot questions. I know that um, a couple of years ago, certain ballot questions kind of got snuck on the ballot and it confuses people. If anybody needs with help with ballot questions, don't hesitate to contact my office. Uh, I am always around. I'm, I'm in the district meeting with people. Uh, my, my staff is available to meet with people. And uh, I've been honored to serve as, as uh, a member of the House Ways and Means Committee. I'm the chairman of public service. We still have some legislation with some home rule petitions to address that. We're still dealing with that. I also, the vice chair of economic development and the economic development bill is still being deliberated. This is more money for our district, more funding for the Commonwealth. And there's some important piece of legislation with that. And I'm also uh, very honored to serve in the veterans committee. I hold our veterans in the highest standard, if not for their they're fighting in the battlefields, whether it be in the Middle East or elsewhere. I know the situation in Ukraine that's going on. And we have to protect our veterans and, and make sure that the benefits are fully funded in homelessness with veterans. I get calls from veterans that because of circumstances in their lives and even with addiction, they may be in pain and they're on pain meds. So this is so important. We help support our veterans out there. I am grateful to all the veterans agencies that have supported me. I'm grateful to be um, meeting with veterans up at our local VFWs, whether it be Brockton or other VFWs, and I'm, I'm there for the veterans because, again, we wouldn't be here to have an open meeting like I am addressing my constituents today and having open meeting and so forth and, and able to assembly without the veterans' support. And uh, we have to continue to support our veterans. We're looking forward to provide more adequate housing for veterans and more safe housing for veterans as well. So this is so important. And I wanna just thank you for your continued support. Um, I'm looking forward to continue to work on your behalf. I've been honored to be uh, a member of the state Senate since 2015. Prior to that, I was a member of the House of Representatives from 2008. And when I was a little younger and thinner with less gray hairs, I served on the city of council in Brockton over 13 years in the school committee. So I'm grateful to be your state elected state senator. I look forward to continuing to work on your behalf. My name is Mike Brady, and I just thank you for your time and effort. And again, if you need to reach me, my number at the State House with any initiatives that are coming up, home rule petitions, we are still working. Uh, though the budget and other things passed at the end of July, it was actually August 1st, Monday morning at 10.30. We're still working on a lot of pieces of legislation and to try to get that economic development bill finally come to fruition. So. My number at the State House again is 617-722-1200. My email at the State House is michael.brady at masenate.gov. My personal cell phone is 508-345-8632.
in my email locally in Brockton is bradybrockton at AOL.com. I'm looking forward to continue to work on your behalf. I'm going to be out meeting with some downtown businesses later today. We've got some money and we got some funding, whether through mass housing or other initiatives to help revitalize our downtowns, especially Brockton and other communities that were decimated over the years with some uh, time of crisis. You know, the shoe industry is long gone. We had a lot of empty buildings in our downtowns and we've worked with our other state agencies to get proper funding with the, my local state representatives delegation as well to get funding for housing downtown, to turn some of these old buildings into market rate housing, to bring new businesses downtown. And a great piece of news we got, which took a long time, is the infrastructure that we were able to refurbish the old Ganley building in downtown that was vacant for many, many years. It was an eyesore. It was a gateway into Brockton. We were able to get state funding after many, many meetings with our state delegation, our state officials, our local state representatives, and myself in Massachusetts Community College. That's going to be an unemployment office, and also Massachusetts Community College is going to have some office spaces there and maybe even some classes there. So, again, my name is Mike Brady. I'm very grateful for your continued support and advocacy, and please, anytime you need to reach me, call me anytime. And I'm grateful, again, I'm Mike Brady, your state senator. Thank you.